Let me log out of my. Good morning, everyone. Now y'all not, I'm not going to accept that. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. <laughs> Thanks everyone for being here with us. We're really excited to get to Friday, right? Yay. It's a long week for me. I don't know about um, for all of you. We had our budget hearing yesterday and um, we lived through it. Literally, <laughs> um, I know some of my staff were watching and some of them were like te texting and we had a watch party and, you know, we're not supposed to have our phones on. And the funny part was two people um, had left their phones on and people were doing the watch party and they're texting and sending messages and their phones were going. Beep, beep, beep. And so there were messages going, I'll tell your staff to turn those phones off. <laughs> But anyway, with that said, we did survive it. There were only um, really two, well, two um, alders that asked anything about early learning. I've been on the hot seat before when 95% of the questions were about early learning. And so to only have two was um, a good deal for me yesterday. Um, just get to sit there and watch everybody else go through it. But that's a good thing. And I, I say that in, in this, we know this year what's on everybody's mind. Well, federal review for us, but for our alders, it's migrants, right? How many of you have any idea how many are in the city of Chicago as of yesterday? Pretty close to 30,000, but I know 11,000, over 11,000 in shelters, over 3,000 in police um, districts, and there's another 600 or so at, at airports, okay? There's a lot of people that have traversed and are here in Chicago. Um, many of them are families. Many of the buses that we're getting right now um, are single individuals. We were getting a lot of buses with families. A lot of the ones we're receiving now are single individuals. But with that said, they're coming to Chicago with a lot of needs, right? We know, and I think those of you who participated in helping us get some of the families enrolled in early learning, we have over 200 children. Um, that have come through migrant um, services who are enrolled in our program. So thank you for that. Um, but what that means again is those were families who had come in and had gotten themselves to a point where they felt a level of trust with people here in Chicago where they could turn over their youngest prized possession um, to people like you because it's not an easy thing to go through everything that they've gone through just to get here and then to be able to look someone in the face and go, oh, sure, I'll give you my baby. And I'm gonna walk out the door and I'm gonna leave my child with you, whoever you are. It's not gonna happen. And we recognize that it takes time. So I thank you for those who are doing home visiting, um, those of you who are going out there meeting families where they are working with them, building that relationship and that trust and allowing them uh, the op opportunity to then come into your house um, and enroll their children. With that said, there are many, many, many more children out there that are categorically eligible because they are homeless. Therefore, they are categorically eligible. So how many of you are fully enrolled? Then I'm not talking to you, but those of you who are not, there are plenty of children in the city of Chicago, both Chicago residents and children who have come and traversed many, many miles to get here who are categorically eligible and we need to be getting our enrollment in. And so you've got now two populations uh, to work with those who are Chicago residents, yes, but also those that are in migrant services. And so we do have 11 shelters operating, 14, 14 are all 14 family? Yes. Oh, okay. Sheree keeps me up on it because she's our liaison and working from our, our divisions with homeless, homeless and, and youth. But we've got 14 family shelters out there across Chicago. We've mapped what organizations are near and around um, those. And I know she's been reaching out to some of you and we'll be reaching out to others. Um, but what we do wanna do is we do want children in care. Being in a circumstance where you are in a building all day with adults, we all know that's not the best place for children regardless. And we need to find ways to get those young babies and those children in care 
for two reasons. One, because they don't need to be there, but also you serve nutritional meals, right? That's not what we're able to do every day the way we want to in shelter. And so what we need is for those kids to get into loving arms like yours, where we're going to make sure that they can get their services, but we, they're also going to get fed. And so it's just really important that we think about opening on our arms where we can um, and working with those families. If you need any support or help, Sheree Johnson, again, is our liaison. She's manager Children's Services Division and can definitely work with you and make sure that we can get you on board with working with that program. So I've got some things on here. Budget hearing I just talked about yesterday. I'm just glad it's over. Uh, for those of you who know, we were, we were in there. We didn't get away from City Hall until it ate something last night. Um, and they looked at us and was like, you know, we still have more questions, but we're going to let y'all go home. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so they gave us a list of things that we have to send now, what's called back through the chair. Um, so when, when we leave here back to the office to answer the questions that they didn't ask um, and get them documentation. But again, we survived it. I just, we want to remind everybody, the majority of the meeting and money and children's services is grant funding. It is not on the books for discussion with Office of Budget and Management because those are federal, those are state dollars. And so those dollars aren't, don't change. Those are already awarded. But what is on the books that is a part of that is our corporate dollar. And we do get $13,033,000 in corporate um, that we use for support services. We use them for scholarships and other things to support all of you. So those thir that 13 million um, is in the budget book. And we know that there is a budget what in the state, in the city of Chicago. Anybody heard about deficit of over 500 what? Million. Um, so we know that we have been able to give them all the reason and cause why we need to keep our 13 million. If anything changes with that, then we will know. Right now, they're not looking at striking any of those because early learning is still on everybody's mind. Um, and so we're hoping that nothing will change with that and I don't anticipate it. Um, but if it did, we work, we, we do our workarounds like we do in children's services divisions and we make it work. Uh, federal COLA documents, how many of you have received your documents? Only a few of you. I, I got hundreds of emails in my box. So if you've not received your COLA applications, and please let us know because they did start going out this week. And that's why it's on here in case anybody did not receive federal COLA, Head Start, Early Head Start, Early Head Start CCP, and Early Head Start Expansion. Those COLA applications went out this week uh, and with dates and everything on when they need to be returned. The other thing reports, do we do reports, right? Anybody know that we do reports like enrollment and attendance reports? How many of you are using COPA? Excuse me, Co yeah, COPA. A couple of people put their hands up that they're using COPA. How many of you are using CARES? A lot more hands go up, right? How many of you are using nothing? Raise your hand, seriously. Some of you are not really working in either one of those systems. As a result of that, my staff are really struggling to keep up with what we're required to do on a monthly basis. Hence, we're working on a lot of spreadsheets. Um, I keep promising my staff that there's going to be a day in their world where we won't live through spreadsheets, but we're not there yet. And so we can't do our reporting unless you're reporting to us. And we've given all kinds of avenues by which we can get information from you. And when we're not getting it in a timely fashion, what that means is we can't report to those that we have to report to. For example, I mentioned before ECBG or PFAPI have requested that we give them all of our enrollment and they wanted it by the end of this month for the first report. So I know my staff have been working with individuals who are funded through those two sources, um, giving you access to a file for you to update all of your data. Like it says here, enrollment, attendance, data elements, zero to three indicators. Zero, I tried to type what you said, Craig. Zero to three caregivers, three to five EC demographics and pre-IPT. If I don't have all of that, your children don't count, right? Again, let me say that. If I don't have all of those data points in the files that my staff are then pulling into a report, then your children are not being counted, which means we're giving information to CPS, our funder, and your children, your classrooms are not in there. If we continue to do that at some point, I'm going to have to do what with those classrooms? I'm going to have to pull them out because at the end of the day, we are really under a laser focus with the governor's office, and I've said this before, where we're looking at and wanting to look at expansion, wanting to look at making sure we're serving children. 
And if we can't get our reports together, it looks like we're not what? Serving. I know you're serving children. I know when I, if I leave here today and drive around Chicago to any of your buildings, there are babies in those, in your classrooms. But if you're not giving us the data to support that, it doesn't appear so. And I've got a laundry list of agencies where we're still struggling to get, and I'm not gonna call anybody out, you know who you are. My team are working with you and asking for your data sets, especially for ECBG right now. And we need it like yesterday. Today being Friday, the 20th, call your people from here and tell them they need to get that data in because I've got to give a report to CPS today. Anybody in here not hear me, not understand what we're talking about, please help me because we want to get it in. Yes. Yes, there's, there's different tabs in the spreadsheet and those data set, those points that are in there need to be completed. And when they're not completed, the staff are reaching back out and then they're reaching up to me and saying, so Ray, though, I still, they still not giving it to me. And I told them I'll be standing in front of people and I'll have problems. I, I don't want to call anybody out, but I do have the laundry list of people who I don't have information from. So if you want to find out who you are, we can definitely do that. But what I want is for everybody to call your people when you get back, please get it done. I need more records for enrollment submitted to CPS today than what I have. I just need more. Not to say that we're stopping after today. We will do another report next Friday and we'll continue to report enrollment. But this is the first report that goes to ISBE. It's the first report that's gonna go to the governor to show enrollment in the city of Chicago. So it's imperative that you work with my team and get that data in. If you, if you have questions about it, Craig is here. If you have questions about it, I'm here. If you have questions about it, my team, we're in the room. Let us know what questions you have about those data sheets and what it is we can do to help support you getting this done. Any questions about that? And that's specifically ECBG. Yes. Uh, so for ECBG, like we submitted the, the report, is that gonna be, like, should we expect that? in the next quarter? Or is it hopeful that we're actually going to have stuff in care, students start pulling out of care, or is there gonna be some hot touch? I just wanna know, to be prepared and make sure that we're not getting things deeply. I really like that word hodgepodge. Just like it, because that's that's our life right now. And I'm gonna give you a CARES update in a little bit, um, but to your in, your in your response, we're not there yet because everybody's not using CARES. Right. And until I can get everybody in there, I can't pull a report out of CARES. And what I won't do with my staff is do part out of CARES and then have them try to manipulate that and then part on, on Excel sheets. It's too hard. It's hard enough for them to do it, period. And that's why we're sticking with the Excel spreadsheets right now while we're trying to get people into CARES on a consistent basis so we can pull our reports directly out of there. Because our enrollment is like ongoing, yes. we want to send it when we have new students or like once a month or something like that? So on the Excel spreadsheets, and ironically, right in front of you, there's a person who can answer that question right across over here can answer that. But we need you to keep up with your enrollment until we say we're moving away from that system. Okay. And so as you get new children, please go in. They go into those files, they review, they see what's in there so that they understand where we are. Um, and they can add those into reports as we continue to our, do our reports. Okay. okay? Anyone else? So for federal, we have to report enrollment, attendance, and meals. And I know my staff are also struggling to get some of that information from you as well. In order for, just like you federal, you are supposed to do PIR or reporting to your, CP, your PPC and to your board, correct? We have the same obligation and requirement for us to report CPPC, Citywide Parent Policy Council, and also to our board, our meals, attendance and, and um, a, a meals, attendance and enrollment. And it's a struggle and I get that. And I know how hard it is on all of you. And I, you know, I could keep apologizing for not having a data system that's really working, but there's, you know, I can't keep apologizing for something that I can't fix. So with that said, I need your help. When, a, when my staff are reaching out to you for this information, it is required, mandatory and necessary. It's not optional. If you have attendance, we need your attendance. You have children, you have attendance. The other option that I've said to my staff, you know, Serato have car will travel. I, I will add myself into it because I'll say, I got five of them near me. I'm just going to drop in and say, I need copies of your attendance books. Why? Because you're not giving me what I need. I don't want to be that heavy handed, but if I get there, we're going to have to do that. 
because we still have to get our reports in and we have to get them in on a timely manner. What I'm not supposed to do, and we did this time, and I'm saying that in this room, we had our citywide parent policy full council. They got their report that morning. They should not get their report the morning of a meeting. Out of respect for them, we're supposed to give it to them a week before, give them an opportunity to read through it, see if they have any questions so that they can then have an opportunity to discuss that in a meeting. The exact same thing in your house. You're supposed to get your reports done in a timely fashion into the hands of your governance bodies so that they can review, so that they can then actively participate in governance. You're tying our hands where we can't do it at the city level, and I need your support. I need the uh, I need the attendance, I need the enrollment, and I need the meals. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna talk with the team directly after this meeting a little bit more. Couldn't do it yesterday, but I'm saying to all of you, it is imperative that we have your information. Are there any questions about what I'm asking for regarding federal reporting? Anybody? We have a survey that's an active survey that's out there that on a monthly basis you can go in and do your meal counts, and then I don't have to go in screaming at Craig going, do why can I have my meal counts? All right, let's work together. Yes. I'm asking them to write a note so we can discuss that after the meeting. Thanks for thanks for asking that, and we'll get back to you on that. Yes. Yes. What? Oh, excuse me. We need licenses from every one of you and every partner site wherever a child is being served. We need your license. Federal Head Start is asking for the license. State is also access for them. And so we need the, the license on your licenses, information that guides us towards how many classrooms you're licensed for and what your capacities are. That's where that information will come from. And we need those. And so if you've not turned them in, I ask that you do that, that we get that you get your licenses for your sites, your directly operated sites and partner sites so that we will have the information that we need for reporting. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone have any other questions? Monthly fiscal updates. I know the staff are at the table. They're handing out envelopes. Um, what we did last time, we'll do it again. If there's anyone who's not here, if a staff member doesn't get it, they will send it to you via email. But we are in the 10th month, 11th month, excuse me, of our federal grant. So we've got really 30 more days. How many of you have expended all your federal dollars? So there's some invoices need to go through the system, right? You only have 30 days. The, all your federal grants end November 30th. And so just as a reminder, you're getting those letters. If you don't know where you are, please open them. Please look at them and see exactly where you are and make sure that you're doing everything that you can to utilize those dollars. If you need to do something different, this is the time to raise your hand, say, Sarathel, whoops, I need to do something different so I can buy for you. We want you to use your dollars. We don't want to turn anything back. You know, I'm a dreamer. I might wake up in the middle of the night and come up with some great ideas to spend your money and can spend it within 30 days, all right? And I don't want to just go in and recoup and, and all that and then find that you really needed it. And so make sure that you have made a plan because we are going to be reaching out to you to say this is where you are. Doesn't look like you're going to use all your money. And so these are the dollars that we expect you to use. And this is what we're not going to leave in your house for you to use because we need to get this out the door. Any questions on that? I didn't think so. But anyway, I'm going to stop. And I, before I talk about CSD update, because I'd like to do something happy before I do something sad, <laughs> I want to introduce to you a couple of people. One you already know, but she wasn't able to be here at our last meeting. And then we also now have our manager of program admin with us. And so I want to introduce you to Margaret Jordan, for those of you who don't know her. Uh, yay. 
Uh, previously, Mar Margaret was with the CSD team. She moved over and has been doing all of the work in CCAP, and now she's decided to come home again. And so we welcomed her back with open arms. Um, she's the assistant director, and she's over fiscal. And so she's got a lot of responsibilities under her, and she's going to be looking in your house and be able to see what's going on, where the dollars are flowing and or not, um, and then be able to have some other hands to help me uh, work with you to make sure that we're expending the dollars that we're actually putting out there. Angel Jones Dotson uh, just joined our team on the 17th, no, 10th, I, yeah, Monday, yeah, the 10th, because 9th, 9th was a holiday, yeah. and she is our manager of program admin, um, and so, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I'm happy, I've been saying I didn't have a manager for a while, right now I have somebody, and so I'm very happy and very pleased. Uh, to have someone who's had experience working on grants before, um, has worked with agencies and helping them understand how to use all their money. And we keep talking about it, right? So trying to build a team internal where we can be more supportive. Um, and so both are on board, uh, working with them to bring them up to speed on all the crazy stuff that we do. Um, but I will say this, they both came in and just hit the ground running. Um, and so they're ready to work. They're ready to work with you. And they're ready to make sure that we're able to do exactly what we've been talking about. And that's using all of the dollars that we have in our hands at your agencies and not turning them back to either the feds or the state. All right. CARES update. There is a CARES data system. You guys know that, right? It is October, whatever day it is, because I've lost track and it is not done. Let me say that, but I think all of you already know that. Uh, we do project by the end of December that there are certain modules that will be completed and online, uh, but there's a lot of training that will have to be done as well. And so HR module, professional development module, there's a PIR tool. That PIR tool is for you to do some of what we're talking about now in-house. It's having the ability to go in and see exactly how, how many children are you know, meeting all of the requirements for the federal government. For example, EPSDT, across, across your children. Can you look at those reports? And so those PIR tool, that PIR report tool um, is gonna come online as well. But in order for us to do all of these things, we know it takes a lot of training. So we're working with our vendor to do um, some face-to-face -face training. And I know some of it will also be virtual. But I need everybody in here, either yourselves and everybody on your team, to become proficient in using CARES because COPA is going, whoever raised their hands, COPA is going away, people. COPA is only going to be a system where we have archived data from our experience having worked with COPA. You will have no access to anything in that system very soon. HR data, we've already imported in HR data um, into CARES so that we can start standing up the HR module. But pretty soon, there's not going to be any use in that system. CCAP is gonna come online as well because we need CCAP. CCAP is a part of one of our funding streams. I know some of you are using that system for that. Pretty soon, that's gonna be in CARES as well. And we're trying to get these things done by the end of the year. I'm telling you this because it's gonna be a heavy lift for us. It's gonna be a heavy lift for you because as the modules and everything come up, everybody's gotta be trained so you can use it. And once we move away from COPA, we're not moving back. And so if your team is vetted in, invested in, I'm going to use COPA, none of your classrooms are going to count. Number of your staff are going to count. And it's going to look as though you're not funded by City of Chicago because none of the reports that we're going to pull would have you in there. That's not going to be okay. And so I know this has been a long road and I know it's been a difficult one trying to get everybody in it and trying to get everybody trained and trying to get everybody familiar with it. Believe me, I know it's hard. It's hard on my staff as well but it is our data system. And starting 2024, there's no going back. All of the modules and everything that you need to use, there's some other things that we're gonna be doing between the first quarter, January and March in that system. But there's parts of that system right now that will allow for you to stand up your classrooms. Is everybody's classroom stood up? Everybody's hand didn't go up? No. Enrolling all your children in your classes and making sure your classrooms are set up because then you can do what? Attendance, right? But if you don't stand up your classrooms, you don't add the children to the classrooms, guess what? You can't do the rest of the business. We need people doing that. If you're struggling, if you need help, you got to tell us exactly what you need so we can plan for that. But there's no going back. 
this is our system, it's going to be our data system, it's going to be your system of record on your side where you can get your reports, it's going to be our system of records. And I tell you, I know what the feds are doing. Guess what? They're doing pop-up visits. If they pop up and they come in and they are sitting with one of my staff and they come up with the name of an agency and say, let me see their data. And they go in and there's no data on your agency. That's an issue. We have got to work together and we've got to get everybody in this system and everybody actively working in the system and using it. So we're going to say bye-bye to COPA very soon. And the only system you're going to be using will be the CARES system. Does everybody hear that? I'm sorry it's taking us so long. It's been much longer than it should have been, but we're coming out on this with a tool that we will be able to use. Is it 100% perfect? I'm not going to stand in front of you and say that it is because it isn't, but it is our tool. It will be our data system. It will be what you will be using and it won't be another alternative. So if you have CCAP, you'll be using CARES. If you have Head Start Early, Head Start CCP expansion, you're using CARES. ECBG, you're using CARES. If you're not using CARES, you're not funded. Does everybody hear me? Because when the when I at when I'm being asked for records, right now we're using Excel spreadsheets. When we move away from that, I need to be pulling reports directly from the system and sharing them with our funders. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is if you're in it. Does everybody understand that? So I look forward to one day that I'll go in and I'll see all your names and all your staff names and all your children. And I'll be able to go, Craig, look, an attendance report. You push the button and you got it. And Craig is going to do a dance. I'm telling you, you guys just need to be there to see it. He's going to do a dance. <laughs> he promises not to raise the, put him out on blast on it and he's going to do a dance. He did a little bit of it. <laughs> I think we'll all dance at that point. And hey, why not have a celebration and a party too, right? Um, one of the last things that we have asked the vendor to do, and this is what we're prepping for early 2024, is what's called end-to-end. -end. We can do modules. I can give you 24 modules, but how do they connect, right? What we're asking them to work on right now is called end-to-end. -end. Well, they will be able to go through the entire system from the beginning of the system all the way through and show you how all of these things connect all the way to the end of pulling reports and, and pulling documents and document generation and all of those things. And so we are planning that training for everyone, but in the interim, everybody has to be trained on the modules that are up and ready and using those, okay? End to end is coming, but do not wait on end to end. Everybody hear me? We're gonna do that for you. We're gonna do it for us so that we can see the walkthrough of the entire system. But right now we need to be using the system. I'll get off that, I'll stop harping. Anybody from my team wanna add anything to that? No? I covered it? Okay, good. I think I'm done. Yep, I'm gonna turn it over to, to, to the next person who's gonna do a dance. I'm, no, I'm sorry, Sharon. Yeah. Oh, no, nobody can dance, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Sheree Johnson. I am the manager of program operations and quality with our children's services division. Um, prior to today's meeting, I was on a call with Office of Head Start in which some of you who are in this room were also on that call. And I told you on the call that I will be presenting some information that I'd already presented to you. So please act surprised as I go through this slide. Um, so Sarethal has already provided us with uh, a minimal update regarding where we are with our new arrivals um, here in the city of Chicago. As she mentioned, we have 14 VFSS facilitated uh, shelter locations for families. That does not include the five shelter locations that are strictly for adults and it does not include the shelter locations that are facilitated by other entities outside of DFSS, okay? So the numbers that we are reporting um, for the most part are strictly numbers based off of what we have with DFSS. Of course, those numbers may far exceed what we have reported. Um, I say all that to say that I have been making contact with many of you in this room or your staff regarding on-site recruitment opportunities, and that has not gone away. Um, please charge it to my head and not my heart. 
um, for some of you who have reached out and may not have gotten a, a timely response or a very limited response or no response um, because this has been a very huge lift. However, it does not excuse the fact that we do have a lot of work to do and I appreciate all of you who are interested in uh, collaborating to support the new arrival effort. I also would like to say that just because we started receiving uh, bus loads of new arrivals as of August of 2022 does not mean that homelessness just mysteriously appeared in the city of Chicago. We do know that homelessness is still an issue for our own residents here in the city of Chicago. Um, so I just wanted to provide you with uh, a list of supports um, that DFSS and the city of Chicago have in place to support not only new arrivals, but also um, any individual within city limits or elsewhere um, that is experiencing homelessness. Um, one of those entities is New Life Centers. Um, new Life Centers has uh, been assisting both new arrivals as well as city of Chicago homeless residents with finding permanent housing. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been talking so much, I'm losing my voice again. Um, so um, they've assisted well over 500 individuals with finding permanent housing. Um, just to get them out of shelter locations. We know that um, shelter space is very limited. We know that there are many children in shelter locations. We know there are many adults. There are many um, school-aged children um, in shelter locations. So we're doing our best effort to um, support families to get them out of shelter locations and New Life Centers is one of those entities. Um, another resource that we have is the Chicago Furniture Bank. So we have a number of folks, be it if they are a new arrival family or if they are a current city of Chicago resident, they do not have to be homeless, but um, they are one of the entities that is supporting our homeless families. But the Chicago Furniture Bank is an awesome entity that supports even any of your families within uh, your organizations who may need some support with furniture, um, furnishing their homes. So for the new arrivals, when they get their new residence, of course, it's like, great, I have I have shelter, great. I don't have beds. I don't have a kitchen table. I don't have a dining room table. I have nowhere to sit. Um, so the Chicago Furniture Bank assists those families with, come. it's kind of like a big warehouse where they go in and they literally shop around through really nice, some of it brand new, some of it's um, gently used furniture where they go through and they can select like, oh, that's a nice table. That's a nice couch. And they uh, literally assist the family with furnishing their entire home. Um, and then they also orchestrate delivery of these items to the home. So it's a really great resource. Um, I encourage you guys to, you know, just take a look. You can Google all of these things. Um, if anyone needs support through the Chicago Furniture Bank, we have our internal resources that can assist. Another uh, resource that we have, which I really, I mean, I, I'm always advocating for cradles to crayons, but um, they are a, a group of folks who accept donations uh, citywide. And those donations can range from diapers to books to furniture, some baby toys, clothing, and then they have a team of volunteers. So this is how great that their efforts are, that they don't even have, they have some employees, but most of their efforts is through volunteer efforts. So they have a team of folks who come in voluntarily and go through all the donations to ensure that they meet a quality standard. Um, and if they do not meet the quality standard, then they find, they don't just throw things away they find ways to donate those items that they that don't meet, that don't fit their criteria. They'll donate them through other measures to ensure that nothing goes to waste. Um, that is an entity that also accepts donations. Um, if you Google Cradles to Crayons, there's a link there that says donations. They have various donation locations. You know, if you are not sure if it's a donation that they they will accept, they have criteria on their website. But you're still welcome to donate those items. And again. Their team will go through to verify if it's, you know, a legitimate donation or not. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the last entity that's listed there is Instituto del Progreso Latino. And that's one of our biggest uh, collaborators, which you can see, move that up, on the screen there, um, that blue screenshot or blue photo that's there. They are the entity. So I know a lot of you, how many of you, and I know the answer to this, but I just want you guys to just move around a little bit. How many of you, as you're driving down the street, you drive past a police station and you see homeless families outside the police station? Humor me, right? We all have, right? Or how many of you have been driving and you drive under a viaduct or you're driving down the street, you see a, a makeshift 
tent city set up and you just see just a, a sea of tents, right? Most of us have seen that. Um, for the most part, though, we applaud efforts throughout the city for those who just show up with donations, especially to our shelter locations, with boxes and boxes of things. Here, we have all these things. We want to donate. We want to donate. The struggle with that is, is that when you go to a police station with those donations, they don't have the capacity to go through those donations or to house them. So for many of the police stations that you drive past, you also see a pile of what appears to be garbage. But it's really donations that were meant for good, but we've experienced rain. We we have things in our city, rodents or what have you, that at night, maybe those things have gone through it. Now, me personally, I am in need, but I am still human. I don't want I don't want things that rats have rummaged through, right? Um, so this organization, Instituto, I can I have to say it like that because I'll get tongue-tied and then I'll sound like I'm cursing, and I promise I'm not, right? Um, Del Progreso Latino. Um, they are accepting donations. So I wanted to provide you guys with their website. Um, as well as a link where you can go to support if you have any donations that you would like to go through um, an official source where we know for sure that those donations will reach the proper parties um, and ensure that we're supporting new arrival families. They also have an Amazon wish list. So for many of the families that are in shelter locations, of course, um, they have particular needs that we have documented through these Amazon wish lists and they've already set them up. If you want to donate and participate and purchase an Amazon wish list, that wish list will then go to the appropriate parties to support new arrival families. This information can be shared again with your staff. It can be shared with your church family, your organizations that you're a part of, because we know a lot of folks would like to support. Um, and this, this is just a, a minimal list of how you can go about supporting through donations. Um, additional information can be found at that link that's at the bottom of the screen. Are there any questions regarding anything that I just stated? My goal is to ensure that every meeting, since we're meeting on a monthly basis, my goal for you um, is for you to be in the know regarding where we are with new arrival supports. We know that buses have not halted just yet. Uh, we also know that children's services, the work that you do, the work that we do internally is a huge lift on its own without new arrival families. Um, but as the liaison for this division, I just want to make sure that we try our very best effort to keep you in the know regarding what's going on. Again, I will be reaching out to many of you who have already been in contact with. There are others who I know you haven't heard from me just yet. I'm sitting right up here at this front table. If you want to say, hey, Sheree, look, at Sheree's daycare, I have vacancies. I can help you. Like, let me in. Help me. Come on up here. I will take your information and I promise I will get you linked to the appropriate parties. Yes. I can. So her question was, are we able to send out a list of shelter locations to all of you so that you can know what's closest to your location? I can, however, let me tell you the nuance in that, okay? We started this effort with seven, I think, seven shelters, right? Some of them, uh, Wright College, I want to say even here, was a shelter location this week. Next week, it changes. So today being Friday, right? I can send you the list of 14. I can. Over the weekend or first thing Monday morning, hey, I'm Kiki. I'm from Concordia Place because I know Kiki, right? I am ready Team, this 14 shelter sites, let's do this. We're going to split it up. You you work on this. You you work on this. Let's map. Let's get, let's get. While she's doing all that, you know what happened? They closed two of those shelter sites. They've opened three more, but they've deemed these as temporary. And now this one might be closing in the next two weeks because the alderman said da 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 da. It's so much change happening. Too fluid. It's not that we're trying to keep you out. We're not. But we also do not want you spinning your wheels. So I can, there are some shelters, for instance, in of Chicago, it's our largest shelter location. It's on Ohio, I think. Currently their capacity is 1,500, 1,500. Of that 1,500, we know 300 of those are children age zero to five. So for sure, we know that location, they're probably not going anywhere, right? We have another one, AIC, that's on Irving Park. Their capacity is 1,000. We're pretty confident they're not moving anywhere. But when it comes to, like I said, Wright College, 
when it comes to daily, you know, we can share that information, absolutely. But we know for sure that some of these locations are, maybe they're closing, we probably don't even know it yet. So we're just trying our very best effort not to confuse you and have you spinning your wheels or showing up and no one's there, that type of thing. But we, I will work with the team to get some type of communication out to you guys so you can have some type of sense of no regarding this. We found that the, um, we have 20 families that have enrolled at Concordia who come to today and early learning and after school mm -hmm. from Grants Park. But once they get into a permanent housing, they may have to take the children out. Okay. So that's what we're, what we're experiencing now. Um, so I'm happy we were able to help them temporarily. Yep. Um, so it's just ongoing. Correct. So what she stated was that for the families of, for one of our shelter sites, which was Brands Park, um, through home visiting efforts, they were able to enroll about 20 children uh, from that particular shelter site, which sounds phenomenal. But we also know that we can't ball and chain families to our programs, right? You know, they have free will to leave. And so what she said was that those families, once they found permanent housing or alternate housing, that those children were removed, right? But that could be the case across the board for any, you know, family. And we know that enrollment is an ongoing year round process. So we know for sure that, you know, just because you are fully enrolled today does not mean you'll be fully enrolled tomorrow. Or even if whatever your percentage of enrollment, it could definitely change day by day. So we know, we know. So um, just because we knew for sure that her particular agency, Concordia Place, was there recruiting, that doesn't mean that we X you off the list because, oh, well, they have children. Let's move on. That's not it. So we are always open to, <laughs> to continue supporting all of you with your enrollment. But we also don't want to lose sight of, uh, we know that beyond new arrivals that we still have City of Chicago residents who still need our support, right? So that means that recruitment, does it ever stop? I can't hear you. Hello. Oh my God. Am I, I think my ears are clogged. You said no. Okay, great. Because it doesn't. It doesn't at all. So your team should still be making their best effort beyond me reaching out saying, hey, you want to come recruit. You guys should still be, you know, vigilant in your community areas. You should still be paying attention to community assessment data. You should be still banking on your parents and your staff. All of that does not stop because of this effort. Right? Are there any other questions regarding any of this? Again, I'll be right up here at this front table. You are welcome to stop by. You can drop your email, your phone number. You can take my email. My email is my first name, Sheree, S-H-A-R-A-Y dot Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N at symbol cityofchicago.org. And for most of you, if not all of you, your award notices will have my name and phone number on there. So you're welcome to email me at any time. Okay, regarding this. And please, again, charge it to my um, head, not my heart. Um, if you haven't gotten a, a speedy response, but you are welcome to nudge me uh, because again, as this one contact for our division, my email is really crazy right now, but I, I welcome all of your questions or messages regarding this. And that's all that I have. Thank you. I'm standing here on purpose. Let's see. Is it going? Oh, I took it off. So on your agendas that, that are in front of you, what does it say on there? It says that this particular update is from a program admin update. Whose name is next to program admin update on your agenda? Can someone tell me? That lady, who is Angel? So Angel is new, yes, she's been here, what, 10, 12 days? And I told her, I said, Angel, you know you're on the agenda. She said, oh, oh no, I'm new, you know? <laughs> But I did not want her name taken off of your agendas because I would like for you guys to see her name and to begin getting familiar with her name. Um, but I told her that, you know, as a courtesy, I guess, and she knew. Because when I was new angel, let me tell you, I was like day three. And it was like, hey, I'm Sarah Burgess Burnett. This is my manager. Here she go, go. And, you know, so I was just up here. But I don't mind it because, you know, I like talking clearly. You can see that. But I'll provide the updates for Angel. But again, I just wanted you guys to have her name on your document. You'll be seeing her name in circulation as we continue to do this work. Uh, but I'll provide this update for her in behalf of her team. Um, so the first update here is our final CPPC Executive Council meeting will be on November 7th at 10 a.m. via uh, 10 a.m. 11 a.m. via Zoom. Um, if you have any questions, our direct contact is Martine. 
Mart Mrs. Martise Brooks. Um, so you're welcome to reach out to her and her team if you have any questions. Uh, we also have our final uh, full council for CPPC on the 21st of November at 1030 via Zoom. Elections are underway and they will also be held during that final meeting in November. So please encourage your, your parents to participate. Of course, we want parent voice. We want parent involvement. Um, the parents that we've had um, have been very vocal, which we appreciate. They ask really great questions. And we also want to let you know that, you know, as our deputy commissioner and our Head Start director, Sarah Burgess Burnett, as she turns around, she's always encouraging folks. She'll say, hey, this is where we are with financials. Did you know this is where we are? Go back and ask your agency. Did you know that this is where we are with da-da-da-da-da? Go back and ask your agency. So we're always encouraging uh, parents who are part of CPPC to come back and ask you guys questions because that's what they're there for. We want them to be the voice um, at the table via virtually or in person when we're having discussions regarding um, Parent Policy Council. So elections are underway, so I encourage your parents to go ahead and get involved. We also have letters of certification and parent committee tracking forms that are due, well, that were due on the 2nd of October. So all completed forms should be submitted to the sales planning email address that is listed there on your screen and your assigned team lead. Are there any questions on any of these updates from program admin? Yes. I didn't want to say that without. Um, because having parents voice for PI is not required. Of course, we want it all inclusive across the board, but it's not a requirement. Uh, for PI. Her question was, is it necessary or these forms required for PI? And the answer is no, but we are trying and striving for all inclusiveness across all of our funding. So of course, we'd like to see and hear from them as well, but it's not required. Thank you. Sometimes when you see me pause, I'll think I know the answer because I, I like to be a know-it-all, but I just wait to, for <laughs> official confirmation. That's all I just look like. <laughs> are there any other questions? I think the next one might be me too. See, it is. Hey, <clears throat> hello everyone. My name is Sheree Johnson and I am the manager of program operations and quality. I am representing uh, B Nichols, who is our director of health and safety, who is out of the office today. Uh, but we just wanted to provide you with one update from our health and safety team um, that the, the next HSAC meeting is Wednesday, October 25th from nine to one. For those of you who don't know, uh, we know that the HSAC helps programs to make decisions about everything surrounding health. So we encourage you know, all applicable parties to join us during this meeting. We have fantastic guest speakers who come through. They talk about really great things. So I just wanted to promote that uh, for the team. But I also wanted to include this really nice graphic that I found because it'll be really boring just to have that one update, like come to HSAC. Okay, thanks, bye. But I wanted to show you guys um, important reminders as it relates to you, right? Um, so look at my graphic. <laughs> look at it. It's just so colorful and bright. And, you know, healing is always messy. It is. Because sometimes I feel, I do, I feel guilty when I have to heal or I feel like I need time for myself or I feel like I'm stressed. Like, I'm guilty. We got too much work. I got a, a classroom full of kids. I'm understaffed. And here I am worried about me. Like, no, you can worry about you. It is totally fine. Look, this is my PSA. It is totally fine <laughs> to worry about you because healing, no matter what circumstance you're going through, stressors in your personal life, stressors at your sites, healing is messy and that is okay. Please take time to grow. That's that middle graphic with the little leaf. It takes time. So please take time for yourselves, for your staff, be considerate of your staff. We know things are, are crazy. I understand, believe me. But we are human. We have lives. We have things that are going on. So just take time to grow. You are good. Does someone has anyone told you how fantastic you are today? No. Hi. <laughs> My name's Sheree. And if no one has told you how fantastic you are, please allow me to be the one to tell you. You are, my team is sick of me saying it because I say it all the time. 
but I really mean it. You are fantastic. You are good. You are great at what you do. Do we all need some work? We do. We do. I absolutely for sure need work, right? But I'm also well aware that I'm good at what I do. I'm good at talking to people. I am good at uplifting. I know where my strengths lie, but I also know that I have some weaknesses that I need to focus on and that's okay. But I need you to be aware that you are good enough too. You're welcome. You are welcome, okay? Your feelings are valid, right? Um, this is crazy. Cares is a mess. I just can't. You valid? Uh-huh. Sure. But we also know that we have end goals. We also know that we have federal and state mandates that are in place that we have to do what we have to do, right? So we know what we got to do. Um, but your feelings are valid. I don't want to do it, but we're going to do it, right? I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah, we're going to do it great, right? Um, and it's okay to take a break. It's Friday. I hope that, you know, on your way back to your sites, you take the long way, take the scenic route. You know, sometimes on LSD, you're going to get caught traffic anyway. So just take a, a quick left look and look at the lake and just enjoy the sights, right? And it's okay not to be okay. So if any of you need any support with anything, um, you're welcome to reach out to me. You're welcome to reach out to our team. We have a really great team in place, you know, be it new or if we're old, you know, I can't say that I'm new anymore, but, um, you know, we have a team in place that if you need any support with anything related to your work, a listening ear or just the support with, I have a family that's going through this and I don't know what to do. You are welcome to reach out to any one of us and we will help you, okay? Feel free to steal my graphic because clearly I stole it from somewhere else that go to credit at the bottom. You're welcome to share it with anyone that you like, but I do thank you for your time. If there are no other questions, I will take my seat. We good? Thank you. <laughs> I did ask Ken to come and talk a little bit really quickly, if you can just take the take that one down, um, about the health and safety modules that we put together and also fis fiscal communities of practice. So he's gonna do that and then we'll move back to the expenditures. Thank you, sorry. Thank you. Do you have one? Mm -mm. Oh, you're just gonna talk? Yeah, I'm just gonna talk for a second. Okay. That was cool. Okay. Hey. Hello, good morning, everybody. Hey, we, I'm Ken McGee and I am the PDM Support Service Coordinator Engagement Manager for Claridime Inc. Couple of two things I wanna talk about this morning. One is the health and safety module, which is going to be coming out that I talked about last time. The first step of that will be, there will be a sign up webpage where you as agencies will sign up your staff for the module. At that point, we'll work with DFSS to validate the sign-up list, and then you will get an email saying that you are enrolled in the module, and you'll have approximately 30 days to complete the module. The module is go at your own pace, so staff will have access to it 24-7. There's different lessons and chapters in there, everything from safe environments to dealing with active supervision. There's a big focus on incident reporting because that has been a challenge that the department has faced as far as agencies being able to actually do what is needed to report an incident and also making the the distinction between notification and reporting. And I know Sarefa has talked about that with you guys a lot. And hopefully this module will help for folks to be able to make that distinction between doing notifications the same day and then doing your reporting within 24 hours. Notifications are very important. And sometimes I think folks will jump the gun to do working on, they're working on the report saying, I'll just get the report in within 24 hours. But the notification needs to happen the same day of the incident. Do folks, does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna just, that's gonna be part of what a big focus of the module there also will be things like FAQs, a glossary, and then there's a knowledge check. That final knowledge check is going to be approximately 25 questions. It's gonna require a passing score of 80%. And with that, that's what staff will do. And then there'll be a certificate that'll be generated. And 
in the event that your staff cannot pass the final knowledge check, then there will be some remediation that will be required down the line about doing that in person. But hopefully folks will be able to take time to digest the information in the module, take notes, figure out things that maybe it might be an aha moment or maybe just or just a quick confirmation that yes, I'm on the right track and I want to make sure everybody else is on the same track too in my organization. So it's going to be a combination of both, but it's important that once you get the email about that you're enrolled, that you go ahead and get started with it sooner than later. And one note about the final knowledge check as far as with your staff, and I'll, we'll say this as well in the module, but each time your staff takes, if they have to retake the module before they pass, chances are they're going to get different questions because the question bank is going to be randomized. So they're not going to get, you won't be able to sit two people next to each other and do a team test. It's actually going to mean that you have to take some time to go through the materials. Some of the guidance is going to be more along the lines of saying that you will need to read in order to be able to answer certain questions where everything won't necessarily be just smack dab in your face, but you actually got to read. But we think it's important. This module we think is really important because health and safety is so important with the children and families that you serve. So that's that module. Question. We have no limit on how many staff can take it. And also part of this, the first module, first part, the first rollout is going to be for federal funded agencies. And that also includes your partners as well. We will ask that your partners in the sign-up sheet that they designate which delegate agency they're attached to. That's, and that will be a drop-down box for I'm associated with El Valor, and I am a partner. That So we will be able to track from an agency standpoint who all has signed up. And then also, after everything is done, we'll know who all has passed too, right? So great question. Any other questions about the model before I pivot to the fiscal community of practice? Any questions right now? Go ahead. That can be a down the line look for us to be able to, to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and certain portions of the module definitely, as we've tested it out, will also play well enough if you need to look at certain pieces on your phone at times too. So there's not, it's web-based, it's not computer dependent. So that's just one other piece about it. Great question um, and, and suggestion too. Anything else, anybody around those lines? Okay. Next one is fiscal community of practice. In the CSD updates, you should have seen a couple of notices about we're starting a fiscal community of practice. And that is really, is geared toward fiscal folks, but program directors, executive directors are welcome to. The first one is actually today at one o'clock. And we're going to have approximately five other Friday type meetings. It's only an hour and a half, but it's not meant to be a formal training. It's meant to be more of a discussion around the practices that exist with what you're doing fiscally. So on these particular meetings, there will be DFSS staff, as well as Claridime staff, as well as delegate agencies and folks who are actually doing fiscal. And part of the goal is like three main focuses for this. One is that we want to encourage peer-to-peer -peer learning. Number two, we want to make sure that we understand what your impediments are as far as trying to do one of the things that Sarafa was talking about, expend your dollars. Some of the problems that folks have sometimes is that they don't know how to spend their dollars or they miss the timing of doing it. And the third point is understanding what the system as far as how much time it takes for you to be able to do certain processes. Because if you're a program director, and you hear, well, this is a budget revision. Well, I expect the budget revision to be done next week since we submitted it in. And hey, we submitted it in, we got our signatures and we expect it to be done, but it doesn't necessarily work like that. And sometimes we can go through trainings, but a training might have a particular focus area and it might go in a particular direction, but that direction doesn't necessarily always meet your end goal as an end user. So one using this venue, we want to start hearing what your end goals are and trying to be a little bit more responsive of being able to talk about those and, and work through those just in a particular meeting. So that's what's coming up. Like I said, there's going to be an additional five, four other ones happening They're all on Fridays. They start at 1, they end at 2.30, and it's meant to be a conversation more than just a formal training. Any questions? One question. 
each one independent of each other or should they be all of them? Oh, they should. It's meant to be a community. Just keep joining. Just hang out every week. Every week we're asking for 90 minutes. Hang out as much as you can. And um, that's going to be part of the way that organically this group is going to be able to grow is by that continued meeting and networking together, too. That's the vision. Anything else, anybody? Yeah. It's virtual. Virtual. Um, yeah, it's a virtual um Link as we go into, if we go into next year, we might look at doing some in person. I, I can't go that far to say that, but I can say that these right now will be virtual. Um, so just like schedule lunch at 12 o'clock, one o'clock plan to get on the meeting and maybe still eat your sandwich, you know. So any other questions, anybody? Around the room? Okay. If not, thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. Hope to see folks on the call today. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. My only add while Frederick is coming up, remember we said we start the um, health and safety modules with federal, specifically Head Start, Early Head Start, Early Head Start CCP. We'll only have until November 9th to finish. And I know that's short, but it, it, I need you to, as soon as you get information, get your staff names in there so that they can begin the process of completing the modules, okay? And I need everybody in who's on that funding source in the system and starting this process. Any questions from any of you that are on either one of those funds? Yes. It's probably going to go to program directors and executive directors so that there's at least two levels of information, two levels of individuals getting it. So they can make sure that the staff are actually engaging. Yes. For the federal COLA, you are. Um, even though a person may have left your organization with a federal COLA, your responsibility is to have information, track that person down, create a check for them so that they can be paid what they would have been paid had they been there because this is retro. Which means I, if I left, if I was with you last um, contract year, I sh I was I would have I'm, I was eligible for a cola that I didn't receive because it wasn't awarded yet. But you do have to give them what it is this due. You're welcome. Anyone else? And when it comes to cola, are you required to do in, um, salary increases? Yes, yes, and yes. And so if my staff see budgets coming back that doesn't show that, we're gonna be in touch with you because COLA means a cost of living adjustment. Not adjusting everything else in your house, but a cost of living adjustment, okay? And that is federally required for these funds, yes. Okay, so Let's talk after, let me understand exactly what you gave her and when to make sure, be, I don't wanna misrepresent and give you the wrong answer. But I will say this, the COLA is retro to last contract year, which goes all the way back to December 1, 2022. So if I worked any time within that time frame, I am due COLA. If you brought me on for a short period of time in there, I am due COLA, right? And you do have to, at, at minimum, try. And when I say at minimum, that means, and I've had to say this to people, so I'll say it in this room. You have a last address for an individual. Do not just put that simply in the mailbox. Go get signature required, right? And if it comes back to you because nobody's able to receive that, you can hold on to that. That's your documentation that you try. But if you just simply put it in a mailbox and somebody gets it and uses it, that person can still come back to you and say, I never got it. So be careful with just sending it out there. Use the system that's afforded to you through the United States Postal Service, signature required, right? And that covers you. Any questions? All right. You ready? <laughs> Frederick. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Director of Finance over New Arrivals, Human Services, 
homeless, domestic gender-based violence, and CSD. All right. <laughs> We're going to go over uh, the federal grants first. You guys should be at least at 83% on these. At least 83%. And no one looks like that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You can put with Head Start, you guys are at 52%. Early Head Start, 43%. Early Head Start, CCP, 43%. Early Head Start Expansion, 45%. But you should at least be at 83% invoice right now. As it relates to the state grants, you should be at at least 25% invoice and expending. Oh, what? At least 25% invoice and expending. ECBG, you have 4%, CCAP, 3%. Uh, finance department updates as it relates to HH, HHS. Fiscal, yes. Yeah. Okay, so for ECBG, some of it may be when you get your grant awards, right? Right? That was last month, though. Because we're in what month? October, and we are halfway through October. Okay? I know we were going back and forth over debates about whether or not you could bill for PFA going backwards, and we've resolved some of that. But at the end of this, if you are not expending, and I have to show this, what he's showing you, I have to show it to CPS and the mayor's office, okay? Previously, I didn't have to, but now they're asking for us to show them what it is we're showing you. They would have been in this room had they not had another meeting, and I was on the phone with them just before coming over, and they're like, shoot, we're not going to make that 1030 today. But it doesn't mean that they're not going to ask for his reports. His report right now looks like we're not going to spend all of ECBG yet again. And it looks like we're going to be turning back millions of dollars yet again. Does that not look like that to you? Now, some of you, I, I look at the reports and some of you are expending your money. So this is average. But when the average comes down to a 4% and a 3%, it looks like nobody has billed anything. How many of you pay salaries maybe twice a month? Maybe twice a month? Maybe more? How often are you billing your salaries to ECBG? How often do you put through invoices for salaries? Anybody? Every time you pay them, you should pay yourself. If I, if I do my salaries on the 1st and the 16th, I should have been billing salaries for the 1st and the 16th and let the city reimburse me. Then you have a flow of cash. If you're doing it on a quarterly basis, you you are carrying salaries for three three months and then waiting to get reimbursed from us. And then Sarathel comes in and goes, oh, by the way, ECBG, I have gotten an IGA from CPS and we're about to send through new contract awards, which now have to go through the queue before you can invoice, which means now you are not going to be able to invoice for two more months and then you're going to be screaming. If you are cons consistently invoicing, the numbers don't look like this. And I, if you're not fiscal, I'm not screaming at you, but go scream at fiscal. Because at the end of the day, I used to scream at my fiscal person. You know, who pay who who pays salaries this month if you ain't invoiced? Did, did you you do you think there's some endless floor of money out there? Because there really isn't. And if you do have it, please share it with me because I could use some help. Personally, that wasn't about work. <laughs> but this is what it looks like to everybody outside of this room is that you don't need the money. And I know you're all tired of me harping on this, but I'm actually tired of being in meetings and talking about it, to be perfectly honest with you. Because at the end of the day, having run an organization before, and I know what my bills were, I knew how much we had coming in, I knew what I had from coming in from fi financial, from private foundations and all of those different things. But at the end of the day, I knew the bottom line. And that is fiscal irresponsibility for us to be here. And that's exactly what they feel we're being is fiscally irresponsible. The mission of DFSS is to be fiscally responsible. 
and we're not. Communities of practice, which he's offering people an opportunity to come, please take your, please make sure your folks are taking it. Because at the end of the day, when things change and if we keep doing this, they are going to change dramatically for all of you. And you need to have your ducks in a row and your house in order if it does. I'm doing everything I can to hold on to it, but I can't like this. Does everybody understand what I'm saying to you? Yes. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, right? No, I'm not. I'm preaching to the people who need to hear it. Go home and tell the people there. We saw, wait, where are we? Like she said, we tell the federal parents, we say, here are the expenditures. Did they tell you what where you are? Did they tell you? Because that's their responsibility is to know. Your board of directors should see this and understand that you haven't billed and be asking why not. If you're paying salaries, and I just say salaries, I know you're paying other things, but if you're simply paying people, you have invoices that you can submit. And at the end of the day, if those were submitted, we wouldn't be here. And all I'm asking people to do is get your money. So if everything went belly up in the city of Chicago, all systems failed and they said it's gonna take us six months to get it back online and then we'll be able to pay you again. How many of you would be able to successfully make it through? Anybody? Not one of your organizations are probably gonna be sustainable. And I know I, I can come up with the worst case scenario because my brain works like that. But if it did happen, you guys would be screwed because you'd have no way to get your resources. But if you've been invoicing, you could look and go, okay, that's only gonna affect a couple of months, I'm good. But if you haven't been invoicing, you are gonna be talking about maybe a year, nine months. And it's great to be able to, I know some people like big checks. So let's let's just invoice over here and then instead of getting 3,000 a month, we're gonna do it over here. We're gonna get 30,000 because 30,000 feels better than 3,000, but zero is zero. And when it looks like this, it's hard to defend. And all I'm asking you to do is help me defend your need for these funds. Anybody have any questions? And any, can anybody help me understand? And if there's other issues, sorry, I just moved the thing on and we put, thank you. I'll, I'll keep my hands off the thing is active here. <laughs> help me understand what you need. Community of practice, take him up on his offer. Have your fiscal staff do it because we all need to be in this together. We're giving you monthly reports, letting you know where you are so that you can see where we see your expenses are. I'm looking at it, I look at it weekly. I wanna know where people are. I have some people I'm gonna be talking to because I don't understand. But at the end of this, if we don't do better, we don't have to worry about doing anything. Is everybody clear? I talked about enrollment before. Enrollment and fiscal, they are connected in everybody's head out here. Nobody wants to crush your organization, but your organization is crushing itself if it's not invoicing. Because the look is going to be to, and I will say there was one thing that was asked of me we want to call this morning, a salary assessment. There was a 10% COLA that went out there. And so you did your budgets and we were taking what you put through your budgets, trying to assess where you are with salaries and how close you are to what's in the current IGA. And there were some who fell off the cliff because they weren't even making the minimum or showing the minimum in their budgets for the salaries as required in the current IGA. And so people were falling off the cliff. So this morning's meetings, I've got to have conversations with people and get that justified. For some, I know what the answer was. I don't know the answer for all of them, but they're looking deep in your house through us to understand exactly what's going on. What I've asked to be done is to increase the minimum salary in the IGA because if you can increase that minimum in IGA, then I can fight for more money for you to get you to that minimum, right? Right now it's 45,000. I'm asking in, today in the on the call, you know, that question from the mayor's office of CPS, what is the salary for a pale teacher at, at CPS? Give me that. She put it in a chat, I wrote it down, right? Trying to get you there, but I can't get you there when we do this. And I can't get you there when I'm looking at your budgets and your budgets just simply don't compute to even a salary minimum as required. So I will be reaching out to people for clarification on what it is that we were able to assess on your salaries. Those who are not meeting minimum is a problem and we need to be working on what we're going to do. Last thing, and I'm a, I, really, I really am gonna give it to you. <laughs> Part of the money coming from Smart Start implied expansion, right? In order to expand an agency, 
because they're asking me for some additional supports or additional slots, you must be doing what with your current? Because I'm looking at a couple of things. I'm looking to see your last budget expenditures over the last couple of years. I'm looking to see what, what your enrollment was because why am I giving you more if you can't enroll? And I am looking at what community areas you're in. I need to look at those things so that I can assess correctly so I can have justification and rationale for who gets it, right? It's not a just give because you want me to give it to you. I've got to look and make sure it's going in the right house because it's not going to help me if I give you more and you underexpend, underexpend even greater than you were underexpending before. So please understand there's opportunities out here for people who are utilizing their funds appropriately and it's harder for me to justify it for those who are not. Any questions? So yesterday, the, the um, whoever listened to the budget hearing, I was there, so I heard him. You know, Chairman Irvin was talking about what's happening in Chicago and how it's crushing small agencies. He's worried about it. I have to meet with him and talk more about it, and we'll do that. But guess what he's going to ask me for? This same data. And once I give him the same data, it's going to completely skew his concern about agencies and their ability to thrive in Chicago. Because what it looks like is we're giving them money, they're not spending it, obviously don't, they don't need it. And I don't think you want that to be out there. I don't think you want that to be the story that's told. So all I'm asking you to do is help me, help you, and get that picture out there because we are definitely under a microscope and a magnifying glass and everybody wants to know who's doing what, how, when, and where. And they're asking for data sets that they've never asked for before. And we're producing them because we're required to do so. All right? Yes. RFP for the next RFP is getting written. I can't write another RFP because right now I'm I'm stalled at the city level. What does it need to look like? Right now, I'd be in the midst of writing it, and it would be launched in April of next year. And I will say to everybody in this room, it's not going to happen in April. Because I can't, I, there's no way I'm going to get one done and completed when I'm getting ready by April. Everybody hear me? Okay. RFP. Question was about the RFP that's due. Your contract in when? Y'all really, you don't want to hear me. You don't. Uh, Y'all really don't want to hear this. <laughs> the question was about the current RFP because you're in an RFP right now that ends when? November 30th, 2024, right? Which means CSD, Children's Services Division, will be right now writing an RFP for the next season. And we're not writing it right now because we are in discussion about what it will be and what it will look like. I'll go back. And until we can get through some of that, we can't go into the writing of the next RFP. And part of what is happening is the initiation of all these discussions about expenditure and enrollment. And I can't debate it. I have to respond to it. And I and haven't been able to show we were able to spend all the money. When we gave $12 million back, I couldn't explain that. When we gave $8.4 million back, I couldn't explain that. It was almost 24 last year. And we were able to work on it at the last hour um, to bring that down, but I can't justify it. And so there's a lot of discussion in my house, the mayor's office, and CPS as we're talking about what the next iteration will be. But until we can get to that, I can't start the writing. I've already said to my commissioner, without me being able to start it by August, there was no way that I thought I was going to be able to do that. Now, that's not to say somebody's not going to tell me to go camp out for 36 hours and write an RFP. <laughs> Might come back and say do that, and I'll do it. But right now, we are in discussion about what the next one looks like. Okay. And a lot of the drivers behind that is what's been going on over the last couple of years with big cities. Okay. Any other questions? All right. I'll go down to the chief for real. Good stuff. 
So Health and Human Services update FY22 invoices should be submitted through September 30th, 2023. COLA allocations have been uh, distributed in advance of pending award letters. Final COLA budget revisions are due October 27th, 2023. Final invoice submissions are due no later than 124-24. Please delay any invoice submissions after 10-27-23 until you are notified of your COLA budget revision approval. Health and Human Services FY23 grant application has been submitted. Upon funder feedback, please be sure to respond to requests within 24 hours. FY24 child care. Invoices should be submitted through uh, September 30th. Revised July and August 23 billings must be submitted no later than Halloween. Okay. <laughs> FY20. <laughs> right. FY24 PIPFA invoices should be submitted through September 30th. Uh, currently, uh, PFA invoices are for services prior to 9-1 cannot be submitted. We have more information on that soon. Um, okay. And to the next presenter. Oh, wait. Did I go through? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, someone? Sheree or? You want me back? Yeah, you you're such an entertainer. No. Oh, okay. Well, all the, it's right there for you. Sign up for trainings. <laughs> trainings, we talked about it. We're good. Sign up for trainings. Anybody got questions about that? <laughs> Margaret wants to stand up and say something about this. Yeah, one second. Go back to the slide for Sister Cat. Yeah. I think that was all. Yeah. Good morning. Um, I, you know, was sitting back here and just looking at the CCAP um, information that was being shared. And, and even though I just left CCAP, it's still close to my heart. And I just, you know, and those dollars, you know, assist your agency in the current dollars that you get with Head Start and Early Head Start and stuff. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I mean, we did. that's my fault. It's my fault. I mean, wanted to go back to what they said as far. Yeah, well, I think it, it said 3%. <laughs> and so um, what I just wanted to, for those of you, we have a total of 23 um, agencies who have a CCAP contract. And we just completed our uh, first quarter. That's okay. First quarter, uh, which is July, August, and September, right? Um, it's still time. My experience has been that sometimes when we build for the children, we know we will find out, and I'm going to say we, Selena, which is the accountant who assists in billings, we'll find out in December that a child has been missing off the billing since January, I mean, since July. Um, do We don't want you to be afraid to tell us because we want those dollars spent. Right. But it is should be a concern that this child has been sitting in your classroom since July and you never billed for them. So for the people who are in charge of, you know, making sure if you have 20 kids in the classroom for total and they should get child care dollars, but you only been billing for 38 for six months, that should be a concern for you. And the reason we're pushing so hard, Selena and I was at the time, was because the CD comptroller's office is now, they used to allow us, and it happened a lot, believe it or not, the city used to let you bill for a kid in July, August, and September, all the way to June 30th. We found it a lot. We're like, it's been 12 months. You, you didn't bill for this child for 12 months? But we were like, okay, we got to spend these dollars. We didn't care. They changed the game. They're like, no. Come December 31st, like what they're giving Selena like to February. But that said, they're going to close out the first six months. So if you forgot to bill Johnny, then that is over. Now we're only going to, we only can submit billings from January to June. So you, so right now, since we're in that first quarter, look at double check, triple check for July. Because it's even though Selena... <laughs> We give that due date because it's really hard to keep revising, keep revising the billings. 
So yes, yeah, she's trying to close out July and August by October 31st. But for, you know, it's important to know that you do have, you know, to the end of the December, but we don't want you to, we want you to get in the habit, just like in the letters that are being passed out now, we want you to get in the habit of billing on a regular basis, knowing that you can revise your billing if you catch a mistake, but it's very important. We spent last fiscal year, the end of June 30th, we were almost at 90%. So we still had to give money back, but we did, you know, celebrate the fact because when we look at previous um years that we spent we were behind you know the 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 pandemic really did a toll on us you know but we almost spent almost 90 percent of our budget and we were excited we actually brought in two more agencies the baby academy whoever and the brain box and we and we thank you for joining um but we're trying to expand the the ccap agencies and the contracts and the monies that's available and we want to show the state we can spend the money but we need everybody to be on top of it. So when I saw the 3%, I was freaking out, but I'm like, it's still time. And we know that it had a lot to do with um, the rollover in COPA and the hesitation of being able to put the kids in the classroom. But we're hoping now that if you haven't billed for July, you still can. If you haven't billed, those dollars are there. If you haven't billed for August, you still can. And I sent out an email, not before I transitioned over, of what you should be looking to spend per quarter, right? So for those of you who got the email, if you were given a $50,000, $75,000 budget, we, I broke it out. Like you should be looking for, to spend this type of money on a quarterly basis. So I'm just hoping that, you know, this is not a true reflection of what we are going to spend for the first three months and that those numbers uh, go up. So I'm just saying, go back. CCAP dollars are unrestricted. They're available to you. And even if for those who, um, if we gave you a set amount, it could be adjusted because there's people who are not spending the money, right? So those who are not spending it, we'll give it to you. So don't let that opportunity pass you by because there's money to be spent. And I was really happy that we spent over a little close to 90 or a little over 90% of our budget last fiscal year. So I'm looking to do even better this year and then we can ask the state for more money. Okay, so I just wanna say that. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other concerns? Anybody? Final answer? Want to make sure that you've had an opportunity to get your questions answered. We are still available after the meeting. We're going, most of us are going back to our office. I will only be there for a few more hours. I'm taking the rest of the day. But if you need anything, the staff are available to you. ECBG, go back, make sure your folks are putting their data in. We've talked about it. Talk to your fiscal folks, make sure they're billing and invoicing and make sure, make sure that you take care of yourselves. We can't do any of this without all of you. So have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. There will be a possible poll coming out for us. We'll be waiting on the IDA.